Monster Hunter World provides hunters with numerous tools and weapons to take on the beasts that roam the world. With each weapon comes a unique set of moves and mechanics that a hunter must master. With training and knowledge of these, a hunter can decimate the monstrous foes that lie in their way. I'm Darkblade and in this video we're going to bring you a hunter's guide to the longsword. The longsword, as its name suggests, is a far-reaching weapon. On top of this, it balances power and speed to perform fluid combos that get stronger with time. This is all thanks to the spirit gauge. Utilising the spirit gauge and landing the correct combos will enable the weapon to get stronger and stronger as the fight goes on. Now while the weapon is not the most defensive weapon in the game, it can make use of the new Foresight Slash. Now while you need knowledge of a monster's attack to actually perform this successfully, if you're able to master this, then it will enable you to get stronger at an even quicker pace. On top of that, it will also protect you from a monster's attack. Finally as well, when it comes to damage output, if you're able to get your spirit gauge high, then you can utilise the spirit Helmbreaker to deliver high amounts of damage and easily sever parts of a monster. But anyway, let's move on to the basic moves of the longsword. The first move is the Step Slash, which is done by pressing triangle as either a draw and attack or from a stationary position. The next basic move is the Overhead Slash, which is done by pressing triangle a second time after the Step Slash or by pressing triangle after a Rising Slash. The next basic move is thrust. Now this can be performed in a few ways. It can be performed by pressing circle on its own or by pressing circle or triangle after an overhead slash or by pressing triangle or circle following a spirit one attack. Next is rising slash, which can be done by pressing triangle following a thrust attack or by pressing triangle or circle following a spirit two attack. The next basic move is the fade slash, which is done by pressing triangle and circle. This is a simple backwards hop coupled with an attack, so it's a more defensive move available to the longsword. Next is the lateral fade slash, which is done by pressing triangle and circle mid combo. Now you can also press left and right and triangle and circle to make the lateral fade slash go in the desired direction if you wish. This is a useful move that comes in handy for avoiding attacks. Next is the spirit jumping slash, which is done by pressing R2 following any fade slash. Next, moving on to the spirit attacks. Now there are multiple versions of this and they're all pretty similar. Now when it comes to the spirit blade attacks, you have to be aware of how much charge is in your spirit gauge. If you don't have enough, you won't be able to perform these attacks. So that's something to be aware of, but we'll talk about the spirit gauge more in the mechanics section. All of these are done by pressing R2. You have spirit blade attack one, which is done by pressing R2, spirit blade attack two, which is done by pressing R2 a second time, and Spirit Blade Attack 3, which is done by pressing R2 a third time. Now you can go into these Spirit Blade Attacks following other moves, as they can all be intertwined with one another. So you could go Spirit Blade Attack, then Thrust, then go into Spirit Blade 2, then you could go into Rising Slash, and then you could go into Spirit Blade 3. However, the most important move follows Spirit Blade 3, which is the Spirit Round Slash. Now whilst the easiest way to do this is to press R2 a fourth time after the Spirit Blade 3, there are other ways to achieve this. Nonetheless though, trying to land this is very important, as this will upgrade your Spirit Gauge, but the Spirit Gauge we'll talk about more in the mechanics section. Anyway, you can also go into the Spirit Round Slash through other means. Whilst the Spirit Blade combo is the easiest, you can perform a Spirit Round Slash by performing a successful Foresight Slash and then pressing R2 or pressing R2 following a successful aerial draw spirit blade attack, which is an attack when you press R2 while sliding down a slope. The unique thing about this move, as well as upgrading your spirit gauge, is that it will sheave your weapon. So this is something to be aware of when going for this attack. Anyway, the next move is the Foresight Slash, which is done mid combo, so in the middle of any other move, by pressing R2 in circle. Now this move could be considered more of a parry move as you're anticipating a monster's attack. Now should the monster's attack hit you, as you perform the Foresight Slash, your hunter will spark blue, indicating that you've successfully performed the Foresight Slash, meaning that you ignore the hit, thus protecting your hunter, but on top of that, it means you can instantly press R2 again to go into that spirit round slash and thus upgrade your spirit gauge. So this is a great defensive move, although it will take a little bit of practice to get perfect. The next move is the Spirit Thrust, which is done by pressing R2 and Triangle. This will cause your hunter to thrust forward with the longsword, and should your Spirit Gauge be at a level higher than zero, it will cause you to go into the next basic move, the Spirit Helm Breaker. So, landing a successful Spirit Thrust will cause your hunter to thrust forward with the sword, and then vault up a monster. Afterwards, you will be able to perform the Spirit Helm Breaker by pressing Triangle, which can be aimed in any direction as you come down, and should it connect, it deals multiple hits that add up to a lot of damage. 
it will also cause your spirit gauge to start regenerating itself over time for a short duration. But anyway, let's move away from the basic moves and talk about the mechanics of the longsword. Now, the longsword doesn't have many mechanics, but nonetheless they are important to performing well with the weapon. The first and most important is the spirit gauge. Now, I've mentioned this multiple times already. Now, the spirit gauge is indicated in the top left-hand corner of the screen underneath your sharpness gauge. Now you'll notice that as you start dealing damage with the weapon, namely the triangle and circle attacks, it will start to fill up red. The more this fills up red, the more spirit blade attacks you'll be able to perform in a combo string. However, performing spirit attacks will drain this red bar. So combining your spirit attacks with your normal triangle and circle attacks is key to keeping this topped up. There are other ways to fill this up, for example landing a successful spirit helm breaker will make this automatically fill up over time, but managing this is required. Anyway, once you have enough of the meter filled up and you perform a successful Spirit Blade combo enabling you to perform a Spirit Round Slash, the Spirit Gauge will be upgraded. It will go from its default level to level 1. The weapon icon, the sword, will then light up white. Basically, the outline of the gauge will have a white aura around it. Now, this will deplete over time, but nonetheless, it means your weapon has been upgraded to level 1. Now, the most important reason to do this is that it actually increases your attack power as well as allowing you to perform certain moves like the Spirit Helmbreaker. Anyway, once it's upgraded, you start the process again. So start to attack with normal moves, filling up that meter again, until you get to the point where you can perform another successful Spirit Round Slash to upgrade the Spirit Gauge to level 2, which will turn the aura yellow, increasing your attack power even more. You then repeat the process again until you perform the third Spirit Round Slash to upgrade it to level 3, which will turn the meter red. Now red is the highest and you will receive the highest attack bonus whilst you're at this stage. Now, the Spirit Gauge works in tandem with the other mechanics of the Longsword, namely the Spirit Helmbreaker and the Foresight Slash. First we'll go over the Spirit Helmbreaker. Now I already briefly mentioned it in the basic move section, but I want to cover it while talking about the Spirit Gauge itself as well. Now, like I said, you need to be at level 1, 2 or 3 in order to actually use the move. However, it's most effective when used at level 3. However, once you successfully pull off the Spirit Helmbreaker, it will drop your Spirit Gauge down one level. Which is a shame, but not too big of an issue, as landing the Spirit Helmbreaker will cause the gauge to fill up automatically after which, which means you can go immediately into the Spirit Blade combo again to land another Spirit Round Slash and then immediately go back up a level. So, say for example you were at level 3, you perform the Spirit Helmbreaker, you land it, your Spirit Gauge will go down to level 2, from red to yellow, but nonetheless your energy should start filling up which will allow you to continue attacking with your Spirit Blade combo, resulting in the Spirit Round Slash, which immediately gets your Spirit Gauge level back up to 3, and then you can rinse and repeat for pretty much maximum damage. Of course, if your Spirit Gauge isn't filled up enough, you can implement Triangle Attacks or Lateral Fade Slash Attacks in between the Spirit Blade attacks to help fill it up and top it off a little bit. But anyway, the third and final mechanic you need to be aware of with the Longsword is the Foresight Slash. Now, as I already briefly mentioned in the basic move section, this can be great as a defensive move, but not only that, it comes in very useful for quickly upgrading your Spirit Gauge. A brief reminder is that the Foresight Slash is performed mid-combo by pressing R2 and Circle. You have to anticipate a monster's attack, and when it's about to hit you, perform this move, and you'll absorb the attack, indicated by a blue aura around your hunter, which will then be followed up with a Foresight Slash, which can then be followed up by pressing R2 to immediately go into a Spirit Round Slash, regardless of how full your Spirit Gauge is, and upgrade your Spirit Gauge one level. Now the Spirit Round Slash that follows on from the Foresight Slash is unique, as in it doesn't actually need any meter in your Spirit Gauge at all to be performed. You just have to successfully pull off that counter attack. Now if Foresight Slash misses, or you mistime it, and your Hunter doesn't spark blue, you won't be able to perform the Spirit Round Slash afterwards. You should also be aware that if you pull off the Foresight Slash, it will consume any red energy that is in your Spirit Gauge. But nonetheless, it doesn't need red energy for the move to actually be performed. So, should you pull off the Spirit Slash incorrectly, it will consume the red energy in your Spirit Gauge and you'll have to start filling it up again. Nonetheless, if you are successful, it means that you can potentially upgrade your Spirit Gauge by one level. But anyway, let's move away from the mechanics of the Longsword to talk about the useful combos. Now, as with most weapons in Monster Hunter World, all the moves can be pretty much intertwined with one another. They all flow together really well, so you can swap out moves here and there as you wish. On top of that, with the Longsword in particular, there is a generous input window between moves, so you don't have to spam the buttons really quickly. Now, one of the most useful combos is the basic triangle combo, which is done by pressing triangle four times. This will allow you to build meter and is pretty easy to do. Now, should you be able to land all four of these triangle attacks, it should fill your spirit gauge up enough 
so you're at about 70% or more, which is normally enough meter to perform the second useful combo, which is the Spirit Blade combo. This is done by pressing R2, 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 so R2 four times. This will consume the red energy in your Spirit Gauge, but it should enable you to perform a Spirit Round Slash at the end, upgrading your Spirit Gauge by one level. A more advanced combo would be the Fade Slash combo, which would be Triangle, Triangle, then you go into Fade Slash, either pressing back, left and right, then Triangle and Circle, and then immediately go into the remaining Spirit Blade combo, so that would be R2, 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 the final hit being a Spirit Round Slash. Whilst this is a slightly longer combo, it nonetheless makes use of that Fade Slash to reposition yourself if need be, and continue attacking. Next would be the Foresight Slash combo, which is done by pressing Circle as you anticipate a monster's attack. When you see that attacking come in, press R2 and Circle. This should perform the successful Foresight Slash, so long as you've timed it right. You can then follow this up with R2 to perform that Spirit Round Slash to upgrade your Spirit Gauge by one. A short combo, yes, but nonetheless it can be useful. You can also perform the last two moves, the R2 and Circle and the R2, at the end of pretty much any combo in this list. However, probably the highest damaging combo is the Spirit Helmbreaker combo, which is done by performing the Spirit Helmbreaker, so that's R2 and Triangle, followed by a second triangle, so long as your Spirit Gauge is at a high enough level. This is preferably done once your Spirit Gauge is at level 3. Afterwards, you cancel this as you land into a Foresight Slash. Now, this is a little bit unusual, because you don't really utilise the Foresight Slash in a move like this. Nonetheless, though, this will cancel the small animation window as you land the Spirit Helmbreaker, allowing you to continue your assault. After the Foresight Slash, perform a Lateral Fade Slash with Triangle and Circle to reposition your Hunter back, and then you can go into the remaining hits of the Spirit Blade combo, so that would be R2, R2, R2. The final hit being a Spirit Round Slash, upgrading your Spirit Gauge one more level back up to level 3, and then you can repeat this combo again. Now, it should also be noted as well, as you are utilising the Foresight Slash, should you actually catch a monster's attack against you during this period, it means that you don't have to worry about the Lateral Fade Slash or the Spirit Blade combo, and you can just press R2 following the successful Foresight Slash to immediately go back into that Spirit Round Slash. Now, that may be a little bit complicated, but nonetheless, it is by far one of the most effective ways of building meter and dealing damage at the same time. However, the last combo I can suggest is your Level 3 Spirit Blade combo. Now, this combo really should only be used if you know you cannot really pull off a successful Spirit Helm Breaker combo. Now, whilst this combo can be performed with your Spirit Gauge at any level, it's most effective at level 3. This utilises R2 attacks and Triangle attacks. So you start off with a Triangle, R2, then Triangle, then R2 again, then Triangle, and then go into R2 two more times. The final hit being another Spirit Round Slash. Nonetheless though, going for the Spirit Helm Breaker combo will probably yield more damage, but it's far more riskier to pull off in this combo. But anyway, let's move away from the useful combos to talk about the aerial and environmental moves of the longsword. The first move is the jumping slash, which is done by pressing triangle after jumping off of an edge, or after running up a tree or wall. This is a pretty standard move that can potentially allow you to mount a monster. Next is the jumping rising slash, which is done while sliding down a hill and pressing triangle. This can be then followed up by either pressing triangle for a jumping slash, or by pressing R2 to perform a jumping spirit blade attack. Now the Jumped Spirit Blade attacks are unique in that they consume Spirit Gauge, similar to how the standard Spirit Blade attacks work. Also when jumping off a ledge or running up a tree or wall and pressing R2 afterwards, you'll perform a Jumping Spirit Blade attack. All the Jumping Spirit Blade attacks can be upgraded from 1 to 3. Now this is dictated by what level your Spirit Gauge is, so this will change them slightly. Of course if you land any of these Jumping Spirit Blade attacks, they can be comboed into other moves after you land. However, the most interesting move when it comes to the environment is the Aerial Draw Spirit Blade attack. Now this is done with sliding down a hill. You press R2, this will cause your Hunter to draw the longsword and attack upwards at a monster. Now if this should land, then if you press R2 a second time, it will immediately go into a Spirit Round Slash, upgrading your Spirit Gauge by one level. This is by far one of the quickest ways to upgrade your weapons. But anyway, let's move away from the aerial and environmental moves to talk about the additional tips for the weapon. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times already, the higher the spirit gauge, the greater the attack bonus your hunter will receive. Nonetheless, this will deplete over time. So even if you don't consume it by using the spirit helm breaker or other moves, it will gradually fade. So this is something to be aware of. If you notice it's about to completely go and there's no way of you getting a spirit round slash in, maybe consider wasting that last little bit on a spirit helm breaker just to get a little bit more damage output. Next is whilst the spirit helm breaker can be used at level 1, 2 or 3, it is best saved for level 3. 
This gives you a lot of damage output in a short amount of time when compared to if you use it at level 1 or 2. Also as well, it is more effective to go for the Spirit Helmbreaker combo and sacrifice that level 3, that red Spirit Gauge, when compared to going for just a normal combo with a level 3 Spirit Gauge meter. The next additional tip is the Spirit Blade attacks. These actually come with a natural mind's eye, meaning that these won't bounce off a monster's hide whatsoever. This also applies to the Spirit Helmbreaker and Foresight Slash attacks. Also when it comes to the Longsword, you can implement dodge rolls and hops into your combos. Now whilst this will interrupt them, it nonetheless gives you some survival options. And finally, when it comes to the Longsword, you need to be aware of this weapon can really easily trip up teammates. So keep an eye on your positioning, keep an eye on where your teammates are when you're using this weapon. But anyway, let's talk about the pros and cons of the Longsword. The first major pro is it's a really well-rounded weapon. It's got decent damage, speed and mobility. And whilst it's really only lacking when it comes to defense, this is made up for by the fact you can utilize moves like the Foresight Slash. The next major pro is the Spirit Gauge. Whilst yes, this is a resource you have to manage with this weapon, it nonetheless enhances your Hunter, allowing you to perform additional moves. But not only that, it allows your Hunter to become stronger as a fight goes on. And then finally is the weapon's reach. The weapon, as its name suggests, is long. So you're able to hit monsters without having to be right up close and touching them. However, when it comes to the cons and disadvantages of the weapon, well, the first one is its defensive options are lacking slightly. Yes, okay, you do have the Foresight Slash, but this can take a long time to master. And until you've done that, the only real way to defend yourself is to roll and get out of the way. And the other major con is, unfortunately, like I said, the weapon does cause problems for your teammates, as the sweeping attacks can easily trip them up. Now overall, the Longsword is a nimble weapon. Its combos all flow together really smoothly and work well in unison with the Spirit Gauge that the weapon utilises. So long as you're performing the correct combos, upgrading the Spirit Gauge as time goes on, your Hunter will be getting stronger and stronger, dealing more and more damage to the monsters you face. There are some areas, such as the Spirit Helmbreaker and the Foresight Slash, that take a little bit of time to master, but once you've got used to them and mastered them, they are a tool that the Longsword can use to excel at offence and defence. If you're a player who enjoys a balance between speed, damage and smooth combos, then I can easily recommend the Longsword. Now remember that the damage numbers and effectiveness of the weapons can vary due to numerous factors, from gear, buffs, monster defences to even the environment. All of these can help or hinder a weapon's performance. With that in mind, learning as much as you can about a weapon as possible can help you achieve a successful hunt. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative, and until next time, I've been Dartblade, bringing you a hunter's guide to the longsword in Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.